All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing? I'm just going to refresh the feed real quick. Just make sure it's showing up nice on your guys's end. But I hope everybody's having a nice Sunday. Those of you that celebrate Easter, I hope you've had a nice weekend and are able to catch your services uh, via online, but still feel like you're part of the community. And again, this is Paint with Lovejoy. We're going to be doing a Balboa Park sunset, and this is a viewer request, and it is specific to San Diego and Balboa Park's a rather iconic park in San Diego. So if you are coming here for a visit, it is definitely a nice place to go check out. So for today's painting, there is no traceable or pre-drawn image on there. So this is great for all levels of painting. We are gonna do a sunset background with some bits of blue sky in there. Um, and we're gonna kind of be abstract painters for the first portion of the video. Then we're gonna use black paint um, and put a silhouette of Balboa Park on there. So I'm going to be starting with the middle size brush. If you are painting on a larger canvas, I do recommend that you move up to the larger brush. Uh, but for these videos, I paint on an 8 by 10 canvas just so I can go through with them a little bit quicker. All right, so what we're going to do first is um, I'm going to start with a really light yellow and then we'll go to some oranges, maybe some pinks, and then we will have a little bit of blue in our sky. And then, like I said, we'll put our black uh, silhouette design on there. Now, if you're looking at my canvas on the screen, you're noticing there's a lot of texture on it. Um, it's certainly not a flat canvas. I reuse my canvases and regesso them so that way I can not go, uh, go through a lot of canvases and have a house full of canvases from doing these demos. So it's a nice way to reuse canvas, um, especially in your beginning stages of painting. So we're going to start off with a light yellow, a white and yellow mixture. And I am going to be doing kind of using the brush sideways and kind of getting a nice swoop of some yellow colors coming up here and then the blue skies around it. So you are more than welcome to change anything. You do not have to copy what I'm doing exactly. Just use it as kind of a base and make it your own, you know, make it if you want more yellow than I put in mine, if you want more blue skies, adjust and make this something that you want. All right. And I am just kind of slapping my brush back and forth. This is very therapeutic, very stress relieving. And right now I'm just kind of creating a really weird abstract image. And this will be our base that we build our other colors on top of. And I'm still using that kind of lemony yellow, yellow and white mixture. All right. Happy Easter. Thanks for a few more of you joining on. We've got Jen and Ashley and Laura. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. All right. So once you've kind of got your weird abstract shape on here, we're going to be going with more of the direct yellow. And I'm going to keep with the kind of the same type of brush strokes. And I am overlapping some of the lighter yellow as well as overlapping kind of the blank canvas area. So again, if you want more yellow in your canvas than I put in mine, um, feel free to add to it. Or if you don't want this darker yellow and you want to move right into pinks or purples or blues, feel free to switch out your color. And also, as you are following along or watching at home, you do not have to complete this painting with paint. If you have crayons, markers, colored pencils, anything that you have, just use this as a base um, but you can use other materials. I just happen to be a painter, so that's why I teach acrylic painting. And the majority of my students are first time and beginner painters, so that is kind of my specialty um, of what I teach for. All right, and if you have seen some of my other videos, you know that I encourage progress photos. So definitely take a picture and we're gonna be adding a little bit of orange to our mixture, kind of going for a sherberty orange color. So I'm gonna go back to where I mixed that yellow and white. I'm gonna add a touch of orange to it, and I actually wanna go a little bit lighter. So if you need to adjust, you can add more white or yellow, or even more orange if you need to. But like I said, I'm going for mine for kind of a sherbety orange color. And just like with the yellow, I'm gonna overlap. Actually, let's add a little touch more orange. Sorry about that. I want it to stand out a little bit more for you guys at home. There we go, a little more obvious. So you do want to overlap 
this sherbet color with your yellows and oranges. And what you'll notice is as you kind of overlap them, that yellow or the light yellow is going to mix with these sherbet colors and kind of create a new color. So feel free to just kind of play with that. This is called wet on wet blending when you're blending one color into another. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. The more that you paint, the more comfortable you kind of come with it and the more your muscles know how to react to what you're doing. So be kind to yourself at these beginning stages of painting. And if you're holding your breath, take a deep breath, just relax. This is just painting. It's never the end of the world with painting. And it looks like I forgot my water. So I'm actually just gonna grab a different brush. All right, so when you are done with your sherbet-y orange color, I do want you to wash your brush out really good, unless you're like me and I forgot to put my water container next to my table. So I'm actually just gonna grab a new brush I'm going to make a light pink and then we'll clean the brush and then I'll make a light blue um, and then we'll be filling up our background with that. Uh, thanks Ashley, I like your comment. Um, it says you've only been painting for four months and you love painting um, but you do have anxiety right before you start a new project. Uh, that is totally normal and I have the exact same anxiety before new projects as well. So that is part of the process. That means that you're human. So be kind to yourself, give yourself a little bit of a pep talk and you're actually gonna do better than you realize. Um, so try not, to, try not to take too much uh, anxiety or frustration into that. You're gonna do just fine. And know that everybody feels that way too before they start a project. All right, so to make your light pink, I pulled some white aside. A tiny, tiny, tiny amount of red goes a long way to make a light pink. And again, I'm just gonna kinda go around the perimeter. If you don't want this light pink in your painting, you can skip this step. We will be doing blue after this. And you do want to overlap some of your yellow and orange with this and do some of that blending. And when I am blending between the two colors, I'm using light pressure and you can have a touch of water on your brush that will help with a little bit of the blending. Um, you'll find your own balance, but just keep in mind that you never want your brush dripping wet water. That will cause more frustrations than you actually want to deal with. <laughs> All right. Nice, so we do have kind of a nice abstract image here. I would recommend that if you do want to adjust your yellows or your sherbet orange colors or your pinks, do that now because we are going to clean the brush really good and we're going to move over to a uh, blue paint, a light blue paint, and you don't want to mix your pink with your light blue because you'll make purple unless that's the color you want and you certainly don't want your um, yellow and blue to mix because you'll get green and that's not a general color that we see in the sky. And I think if we see it in the sky, you're hopefully either looking at the northern lights or the green flash from the sunset. All right, so to make our light blue, I'm gonna pull some of the white aside and grab a tiny amount of blue. I am going super, super light with this one. You can make your shade of blue to your liking or if you prefer purple or if you prefer the whole thing to be sunset. Like I said, just make this your own painting. All right. And if you do have any other questions, um, feel free to just write them in the chat box and I'll re-articulate the question for everybody and answer it. So, I think we've been doing this, these demos, let's see, I think I'm almost going on two weeks now. So it's been great structure for me knowing that I get up every day and I'm here at 11 o'clock to talk to you guys and paint along. And it has been hugely beneficial for me uh, during this transition phase and this craziness that we're all dealing with. But we're all in it together and we are all getting through it together. All right, so again, I'm still using that light blue, filling in the remaining places of my canvas, and then I will make a darker blue and do a little bit more colors on top of that. 
And if you're painting at home and you are painting on a stretched canvas like I am, I do recommend that when you reach the edge of your canvas with your color, just carry it over the sides, the tops, and the bottom. Um, just that way it looks really nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. If you are like me and you forget to do it, I actually just paint the edges of my canvas or panels black um, after I'm completely done. I like it. It's a bit more of a, almost kind of a framing and a bit more of a modern look to it. All right, so we do have our canvas completely covered and I'm gonna make a darker blue. So just taking that same mixture, adding a touch more blue to it and going just a touch darker. Your shade may be a little different than mine. And if you apply it on here and then you go, you know what, maybe I want it a little bit darker, feel free to adjust and then reapply. Most things in the art world are not set in stone um, and there's a little bit of leeway. So it doesn't have to be exactly executed to what you see, just use it as a guideline. So now I'm taking this darker blue, just kind of slap it on there and then I am gonna go back, wipe my brush off, get rid of some of that excess paint and then with light pressure, just going back and blending that darker blue into the lighter blue, possibly into some of the other colors. And again, if you need to add a touch of water to your brush, you can do that and that will help with the fluidity and a little bit of the blending. And not bad, because right now you're a full on abstract painter. It's fun to do abstract. And I do believe there was a viewer request uh, somebody wanted a modern art painting, so I think I might do a Mondrian. And he keeps very simple color palettes. And I will have a traceable available for that one. And then I think I do have the list out there. Yeah, I do have the list out there for next week. So feel free to jump onto the Paint with Lovejoy page, scroll down, I think, um, like the second or third playlist, and you can see the subject matters for next week. And then leave a comment and I'll start getting the prior or following week. Uh, their subject matter is on there too. So let me know what you guys want to see and kind of keep it in mind. I am trying to keep these at about a 30 minute demo. Um, I am working on some watercolor demos. Those might be a little bit longer um, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to structure it. Uh, so I can probably do about three watercolors in a one hour live demo for you guys. All right, so just checking on your comments. Oh, sorry, you had a hard time signing in. Glad you're here, Janet. Um, nice, and Jen says you're gonna do a nightscape and put your telescope in it. Very, very cool, awesome. And again, happy Easter to everybody. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me um, and coming back day after day and just giving support. Really, really appreciate it. All right, so at this point, um, we're actually, we can move into doing our silhouette design. And what I'm gonna do is I will use the brush and I'll draw the outline. We're gonna do, there's a dome in Balboa Park that's gonna be right here and it's got a couple of things on the roof. And then there is this long, tall structure, um, the tower at Balboa Park. And then I think we'll have a little palm tree down here in the right hand corner. So again, feel free to switch this up, add anything to your park, do something different. If you want to do palm trees only on here, like I said, go right ahead. <laughs> All right, so, and again, I forgot my water, so we're just making do. Um, so I'm actually just grabbing the black paint. And what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna kind of put a little bit of a ground on here. So I'm starting at the bottom, maybe about a half inch up. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. I'm gonna put a little line, go to the other side, about a half inch up as well. And then we're just gonna kind of connect that and fill that in with black paint. This will be kind of our base that we work from. And just filling it in. If you are using student grade paint today, like I am, um, you are noticing that your paint is, um, probably a little more transparent than you would like it. Grab another paint. Um, so do apply your paint a little bit thicker and use less pressure so that way you'll get a little bit more coverage. Um, that allows you to apply it a little bit thicker. If you need to, you can always apply two coats, let it dry and then apply your second coat. And if you are catching this video on the replay, 
I do recommend that you let your background dry and then move into putting your black silhouette on there. All right, and now grabbing a brush that I like. There we go, we will wash all those later. So I'm gonna draw basically what we call a wire frame. I'm gonna draw our individual shapes and then I'll fill stuff in. So after I draw all of them, feel free to pause the video, transfer what you see to your canvas and then pick the video back up. So like I said, we have this huge kind of dome shape. So basically just doing a half circle on here does not have to be perfect. And if you can kind of see through the texture of the canvas, don't stress. We are gonna be filling this in and you can reshape a little bit as you fill in your design. All right. So it is gonna look kind of weird. Um, let's see, we're gonna do a big rectangle on the left-hand side and then a smaller rectangle and a little bit smaller as we get towards the top. Then we'll be placing some windows. So I have actually found that it's easier if I just kind of draw my top line here. Don't stress about it, don't overanalyze. If it's crooked, that's totally okay. Don't think too much. You're five years old. You're making geometric shapes. Get out of your head. All right, so we got our first rectangle on there. We're gonna do our second one and it's gonna be a little bit smaller. So if you want, sometimes it's easier to put the side walls on first, then we'll put the top. And again, if they wave or dance a little bit, that's okay. We call that style in the art world. So be kind to yourself as you are creating this. And we've got another little box on top of here. Again, remember to breathe as you're making these lines. If you're noticing that your hand is a little shaky, um, as you touch the canvas with your brush, I want you to exhale and that will make you a little less shaky. All right. So now before we fill in stuff and add little details, we need to put our windows in for the Balboa Park for this tower. So that way we can see the background reflecting or shining through. So starting again at the bottom, I'm gonna put a little line there that's gonna be the base of our window. And then just like we did the arch here, we're gonna do another arch above it. Remember to breathe. And again, if it's one is a bigger size than the other, or it's a little lopsided, do not freak out. Perfection is overrated, and each person in the world has a different idea of what is perfect. So you're never gonna get anybody else's perfection correct. So gonna go up into the other boxes, do the same thing, create the windows. And as you're getting into the smaller ones, you may need to wipe your brush off if you've got a lot of paint on there. So wipe off all the extra buildup. And then if you need to, as you get into smaller spaces, treat the brush like a pencil and use just the tip and try to keep light pressure. And like I said, each one of you is gonna have a different comfort level with this. So be kind to yourself as you are teaching your muscles in your hand um, something new with the pressure. All right. So now we're actually, this is the fun part. There, is a, there wasn't any windows in the dome. So I'm actually gonna grab the larger brush I was using and fill this in. And then we're gonna put a little palm tree down here. We'll put some tops of the trees. And then we do have a few little details on the top of our dome and the edges of our building. But for right now, it is nice and satisfying to just apply that black paint on there. Again, you're gonna apply it kind of thick and if your background is still wet, it should be dry by right by now, but if it is still wet and you get some of your underneath colors in there, don't freak out. Just apply your paint a little bit thicker or when it dries, apply a second coat. And if you need to, you can kind of reshape the edges and when you're doing silhouette work, it is easier to make your object bigger, much more difficult to make your object smaller. So if you're not sure when you're doing something, um, silhouette design, maybe try a little bit smaller if there's room for it to grow bigger. Um, otherwise, maybe practice your design on a scrap sheet of paper. 
or paint it a second or third time. All right, so just fill it in and I will be leaving where those windows are um, the background paint color shining through. And as you're doing this, again, just kind of play with the pressure. Try pushing a little bit harder just so you can see how it widens the bristles and makes a bigger line. Try the light pressure when you come in close to the window. Again, you're just getting your muscles and your brain more comfortable with new concepts and new skills. And if you need to move down to the smaller pointy brush, go right ahead. I will be going back to it when we start moving into our details. And if I remember correctly, I think Balboa Park had their centennial 100 year celebration. Uh, I wanna say it was in the last three to four years. But I just think that's awesome that the park has been there that long. All right, so I put that aside. Okay, looking good on screen. Now moving back to the pointy brush and we're gonna move over into this bottom uh, left-hand corner. We're gonna put a little palm tree on there. And I will do this palm tree a little bit different than I've done in some of my other videos. I won't be putting leaves on it, but we are gonna get the tree trunk right here. So placing where I want the end of my palm tree to be, using a little bit of pressure and just bringing the tree trunk right down to that ground. And then, like I said, we're not going to add any leaves, so we're just going to do the palm fronds. So starting at the end, curling these around, use light pressure so you can make some skinnier lines. And we're actually going to add quite a few palm fronds to this one. I think I usually in my other videos, I add five, but I think this one's going to have a lot more. There we go. And let's actually add one extra one down here. We have a very healthy palm tree. He's been hanging out in Balboa for a hundred years as well. All right. And then I actually don't like this really flat line because if we were looking at a landscape, um, we wouldn't really see that, especially in Balboa Park because there's so many tree lines. So I'd want you to just take your brush and we're just gonna basically kind of stab the canvas, get a little bit of that texture going so that way we don't have the same straight line. And we're gonna do the same thing on the right hand side of that dome. And sometimes it's just nice to just stab your brush on the canvas. Take out any of your anxiety, any frustrations. All right, so now we're gonna add kind of some of the top details on our building here. So I'm gonna start with the dome and we're gonna put a long skinny rectangle on there and then we're gonna fatten up part of the rectangle. So again, if it's easier, start with the side walls and then give it a top and then fill that in. And then there is a little bit of uh, a bulge happening right there. So I'm just using the edge because again, it's a silhouette. We don't need the interior des details. We just need the perimeter details. And I'm actually grabbing one of my smaller brushes, even a clean brush, so we can do the little cross on top. If you need to, um, you could do this with a Sharpie marker if you're finding too much frustration with the brush. It is okay to swap and adjust for what you need. But we're putting a little cross on top of here. And I think from the original picture, we did have a few little lines on the roof. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing on the top of here. Just gonna grab the other brush since it's already got so much paint on it. We're gonna do another rectangle and then we're gonna do a cross on the top. So again, just using the pressure of the brush. This one's gonna be smaller than the other so you could actually get to where it's just two. Oops, that's a little crooked, oh well. That's why I did not go into architect school to become an architect. Too many straight lines for me. All right, and then we're gonna put a cross on top of this. So I went back to the even smaller flat brush. And then here we did have little, uh, I guess, embellishments on the corners of each of the 
the levels of the tower. And again, if you've got a particular landscape or architectural element that you want to do a silhouette scene with, you can swap out the design and use this background. And just Google silhouette of whatever that object is that you wanted to recreate. All right, whoops. Go back with more black paint and fix that. Nice. And I've taught this painting quite a few times. It is a San Diego favorite. And I have had people go kind of an extra step. I had some people uh, write their name in the dome. I think one class that I taught, somebody asked somebody to marry them. Will you marry me? I forgot the name, actually. And that was a long time ago. But I thought that was cool. So feel free to adjust this. Make it your own. Do something different. Make it a fun gift for somebody. If you do gift your paintings to people, take a Sharpie marker and on the back of the canvas, on the back side like that, write a message to that person and it makes it more personable or more personalized. <laughs> All right, so I think that actually takes care of our painting for today. Um, really appreciate that you guys came to hang out with me. Um, really honored that you just, again, take time out of your day and spend it with me, so thank you. I will still be here every day at 11 a.m. doing the live demos. Um, and if you can't catch it at 11 a.m., definitely catch the replay. Please send me pictures of what you paint. Email them to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in social media, uh, hashtag or at paintwithlovejoy. Um, but it really, for the last three years, your guys' pictures and videos and response has what's kept this channel going and growing. Um, and actually encouraged me to do my online school. So check out paintwithlovejoy.com for some more in-depth classes, as well as everything that I have on YouTube. So hope everybody has a great weekend, a nice Sunday. Hope you can still celebrate and give love to your family, even if you can't be with them. And yeah, just take it one day at a time and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Cheers.